I am Shweta. I have over 16 years of experience in IT and software. So my name is Jeff Burke. I'm a senior cloud solutions architect at Sunari. My name is Alistair. I am a contract senior DevOps and platform engineer working for the UK government. Oh, recording in progress. Hello, everybody. My name is Alistair, and you'll know me from being on the Slack channels, answering all your questions. In the daytime, when I'm not doing that, I am a contract senior DevOps and platform engineer working for the UK government, where we have some 60-odd Kubernetes clusters to manage on a daily basis. <clears throat> So what we're going to do today is to talk about how we recover a crashed API server, because when you're doing the exam and you have to edit the API server manifest, it can be very stressful if the API server doesn't come back. So we're going to cover a few scenarios here where we are going to find what is wrong with a API server and bring it back online. And when you can do this in an exam question, you are going to be able to recover that question and score your points for it. So I have pre-prepared six different scenarios of a crashed API server, which we're going to walk through one by one and bring the API server back online once we have diagnosed what the issue is. And following that, we will have a question and answer session. Brief overview of what is, how we're going to debug an API server. We will carry on from here. So the first technique is you need to be on the control plane node because that's where the API server is. If you're in an exam, you'll be generally on a student node, but you will have an SSH command given to you in the question, which will take you to the control plane node. So you need to be there first. The next thing we do is we restart Kubelet so that we can get some up-to-date information directly from the API server in the Kubelet's logs. Because if the server is actually crashing, it will go on a crash loop back off, which will get longer and longer. And you may have to wait up to five minutes before you get any more information. By restarting the Kubelet, we can then get the Kubelet to try and get API server going immediately again, and we will get information much more quickly. So the next thing we do once we have done that is we look at the kubelets logs with the journal total command, and that's where the error messages, the first lot of error messages that we're interested in will show up. And there will be cases where the error message in journal total will lead us directly to the API server manifest because the API server manifest can't be read. Maybe there are some errors in your YAML, and then we will go straight there and fix it. If it's not that, then the API server will be starting and crashing and stopping again. And then we go and look for the API server's logs in this directory var log pods, where crashing pods will write their logs because you can't get them with kubectl logs because the pod is not running. So with that in mind, let's go start up a playground and create some scenarios that are going to crash the API server and try to fix them one by one. So let's get to the playground. Okay, so I've cloned a repo, which has got some stuff that will set up some broken API server scenarios such that we can work through them. Now, what I'm going to do in the second terminal is to create a watch on CRICTL pods, PS, so that we can see what the containers are doing when we do not have the ability to use kubectl because the API server is crashed. The link of the GitHub repository is on the previous slide. So if we publish the slides, they will be there, or I can post it in the chat a bit later. There we go. Now this is showing us all the containers that are currently running and their pod names. And we're going to see this changing as things get broken and get fixed. So let's set up the first scenario. So this will take a little while before the kubelet actually does, before the API server actually does crack, and it will disappear from this list when it does. Oh, 
all hurry up and fall over. It will eventually. There we go. It's gone now. So this is the error that you're likely to see when you have been editing an API server manifest and it hasn't come back up. So following on from the guidance I gave, the first thing we need to do is to restart the kubelet. And then we get its logs. And uh, we're looking specifically at the stuff about API server. Right, there we are. Already we've got an error there. Right. Fail to get status error sheet. Log. <laughs> right. The API server pod has not been able to be started. <laughs> so. <laughs> That means it has started, but it's immediately died again. So now we need to go and find the logs for that pod and find out why it's dying. We'll notice that there's two log directories here. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's two. So we look for the one with the latest date, and that's where the latest information is going to be. Right, and now here is our pod log. So let's see what's in there. So it's telling us unknown flag. So there is something wrong with the arguments to the API server that it doesn't like, and that's what's making it crash. So let's go take a look and fix that. And it is indeed an invalid argument. Restart the kubelet again quickly. Well, it might actually have already gone. Yeah, let's restart the kubelet quickly so that it tries to restart API server faster. And let's wait for it to come back. There we are. Now it's off. Right, scenario one done. The next one. <coughs> Rain will wait for the API server to die. It's gone. Right. Okay. So let's repeat the process from before.
So this again, looks like it's not managed to start the server. It's gone into crash loop back off. So again, we need to go examine the launch. <clears throat> Okay, we've got three now. So again, we take the latest, which is that one. Right, now it's trying to open a file here and it's telling us it does not exist. So let's go have a look at what's in there. Indeed, it does not exist. CAauthority.cert. Our guess is it's going to be the CA.cert. Yeah. Use the file it doesn't like. And try this. Here, the API server, it's come back. <clears throat> Next one. And if I'm going too fast, or you'd like to see one of the other scenarios again, please punch. Okay, API server has gone. So we repeat the same process. Give me. Would anybody like to hazard a guess at what's wrong with this one and maybe post it in the channel? Anyone who's up to guess the error? Yep. That looks like what the problem is. Yes. So let's go check it. And yes, you're right. Well, 
Wait, we're back up. And we are. There we go. Anyone like to suggest what they think the problem is this time? Well, these are possibilities. Yes. Note that these errors that Kubelet will give you are the same errors that you will get from kubectl apply if you've got a similar error in another pod manifest. So we're looking at the same sorts of things here. So to any way other to check the error other than using journal CTL, no, not for this, because it is the kubelet which is detecting these errors, and the kubelet's logs are found by using journal CTL. Right, so let's go find out what's wrong with that. It's given us a line number here as well, so we can make use of that. Line 67. So let's turn on line numbers. And go to line 67. Well, oh, notice what the cursor is doing here. It's just jumped out a little bit. Now that suggests that somebody has put a tab in here and we know that YAML really hates tabs. So that's going to be what the error is. So let's sort it out. See, it's jumping back two at a time. And these are all tabs, which are invalid. And we're back in business. Now these have got two more scenarios to go and these last two are a bit trickier. So there may be some CKS people here, but for the benefit of the CKA people, what we're actually doing here is setting up Kubernetes auditing on the API server. We don't need to know the details of what it's about, but just what's in these bullet points here are the things that we're going to have to look at possibly to find where the errors are. So there is a file. It has to be mounted as a volume and the part to that file is pointed to by a cube API argument. Interesting point to uh, Venkata, but unfortunately, YAML is just YAML, so you can't really validate it according to 
what Kubernetes is expecting. That is done by the internal workings of kubectl and kubelet. There is a link to another page on the community site, which details these kinds of errors and what you might do to fix them. That is linked from the, it's not linked from there. I'll post the link, but it's on the, it's the community fact, YAML fact page. <clears throat> okay. So it's now crashed. So let's carry on and fix it. Same procedure, I've seen. So, looking at this and looking at this, does anybody got an idea of what might be wrong? Problem with the volume mount. Yes, there is. So we're looking for this file, but it's trying to load that file and it doesn't exist. So let's just check. Yeah, there's definitely no dev audit. Go down to the volumes. Yep. We see up here that we're trying to load a file called prodaudit.yaml. Yep. If we go further down to the volumes. The audit volume is trying to mount this file, which does not exist. So that's correct. Now let's wait to see if our API server comes back up. Did you see that the API server flashed up and then it disappeared again. Now that suggests that we haven't found all the errors. So we're going to have to go back to the start and look for another error. So now it's in crash loop back off. When it's in crash loop back off, we have to go and look at the pod logs to find out what is wrong. Lots of things now, which is the newest one. 12, 13, 12, 28. That's one. So now we take the newest, there's two files in here. So we look at the newest one. Right. Command failed. Error loading or the policy file failed decoding YAML. Now we know that it's trying to load that file called prod audit.yaml. And what it's telling us here is that there is an error in that particular file. So cannot start any token. Uh, my guess is that's going to be similar to what we fixed in the earlier scenario. So let's go and edit that file and find out what the issue is at line seven. Oh, look, there we go. 
looks like the last one, doesn't it? It's a tab, and we know that YAML absolutely hates tabs. Right, now it looks like it's up and it's staying up. So we should have to fix that now. Right, so that's the final one, which again is another tricky one. All right, there's one question. How come the API server ready responded on the kubectl and get pods command while the results show the API server pod not ready state? The kubectl get pods will not return anything if the API server isn't running. You'll get unable to connect to host on 6443. Okay, so Q API server has restarted here, but it should go down again in a minute. <clears throat> Let's just try this. See, it's still not happy, so there is something wrong. Right, cubes, it has gone down and restarted again. So let's go through the process. Okay, so it's in crash loop again, so we need to look out the pod logs. Right, what's the newest one of these? Still the 1228 one. Oh, that's a lot of errors. So, what do we think is wrong here? Note especially this address. What relevance does that etcd indeed? So there is an issue with etcd. Now we can use this exactly the same technique to debug any of the static pods, not just the API servers. So now we're going to have to go through this for etcd specifically. So let's go. So etcd is in back off. So now we need to go and look at the pod, log, pod logs for etcd itself. So we've got two etcds. This is the newest one.
Okay. Can anyone see what the issue is here, perhaps? Wrong file name. So that is similar to the one, I think the second scenario that we did, but this time it's for etcd. Um, okay. Blah, blah, blah. PKA, etcd, etcd, server dot search. Let's just see what's in there. Yep, no such file. Most likely it's this one it wanted rather than what we've got there. So let's fix that. Right, now we've got etcd, and we've got Cube API server, so we are looking good. Yep. We are all up. Oh. So that ends the scenarios that I prepared for you. So now we can move on to Q and A. We still have enough time if anybody wants to see any of those scenarios again. Yeah, sure. Let's take a few questions and answers from the chat. Any tools to check the AMR file for the best practices? Check indentation sector, minimize the typos. Not so much that I know of. Uh, there are various tools like YQ, tools that come from AWS for uh, converting YAML to JSON, but generally they all rely on stock YAML parsers like the YAML parser for Python or the YAML parser for Go. And that's just going to return the same sort of error messages if the YAML is, poor, is poorly formatted. Okay. So it's more or less about knowing what, what to look for. Now, let me just find something and paste it in the chat, which is the YAML back, which I talked about earlier. Right. Let's take other questions. Can we use VS Code to check YAML files, but not allowed in the exam? Certainly not allowed in the exam. No, you're only allowed to use what is present on the exam environment. And that is basically then that's your editor. Right. So let me just paste the YAMLs. Great. The next question is you can configure them to use spaces as indentation, not tab. So even if you click tab, it, it will insert tabs. Yeah. Yes. Something like that. Yep. You can indeed. Now, when you, there is a .vimrc file, which you will find in the home directory when the session starts. In fact, I may have one in here that I can just show you in the playground. There may not be one there. But uh, yeah, there's a .vimrc. Let's see what's in there. Yeah. So yeah, set ET, which means expand tabs. Set TS equals two, which is tab stock two, it's set shift width two. Now, so this is on the CoCloud playground, and it would seem that the lab team have helpfully set up the DocVimRC for us to do this. Now, on the real exam terminal, there will be a DocVimRC, and some of these settings may be set. 
Well, if you look in the community fact and on my pages about preparing for the exam, I list a few useful settings that you, if you memorize, you can edit the .vimrc as soon as you start the exam and put in any settings that you want. Hmm. Right. There are a few more questions in the Q&A section. What are the basic troubleshooting steps we need to check when the node is not up and running? When the node is not running, you mean not? as opposed to the API server. Now, if, an, if a node, like a worker node is down, there could be several issues. And it may be that the question is set it up to be cordoned, in which case it will show that the node is ready, but can't be scheduled. Now that's probably because it's been corded, but if the node is offline, then you should check that Kubelet is running and it's, the Kubelet is not crashing. And it is properly started with a uh, system CTL status kubelet, which is when the kubelet is not running, then the node is completely offline. So as far as CKA troubleshooting is going to be, it's either going to be that the node is, is cordoned or the kubelet has been stopped. Let's take another question. What are those basic steps? to troubleshoot any port failure or an application failure. I mean, if you're just talking about normal pods as opposed to, because here we were talking about the system pods, the like API server, etcd, but for normal application pods, it's just generally check the pod logs, use kubectl describe to see if there's anything in the events section at the bottom of describe. Right. I hope that answers all of your questions. And also don't forget to join a Slack community in case you want to refer to this recording later, whenever you're free. Uh, we'll be posting this recording in the Office Hours with Communities channel. And if anybody wants to try these scenarios for themselves, you only need to clone the Git repo onto the A playground because all the playgrounds have Git installed. It's too far back in history. <clears throat> Can we be asked to install etcd to CTL in the exam? I would think it's unlikely. Although I know there is a question in the ultimate mock series, which does that. But I think the ultimate mock series have been designed to be harder than the real exam, a bit like killer. Where is the playground? Playgrounds, Kubernetes playgrounds are available to premium subscription members. That's correct, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you're wondering, I'll be adding the link below, just a sec. Mm. There's one more question. Sorry for a dumb question. Can we switch from default namespace to another namespace? In what context? We can switch to switching. I was just running this in the default namespace, but all the pods that we're fixing are in cube system, but. You need to, if you're doing the exam, you need to switch to whatever namespace they, the question asks you to switch to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kubectl config search. Context. Or a, or a namespace system, for instance. 